What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. And guys, I'm gonna share with you something that I, I don't know if it's real quiet, or I don't hear much actually about it talked at all in YouTube videos and teaching videos on finding bass in the winter. I kind of had like, I don't really say revelation, kind of like a, not a voila, but like just a, a, a relapse maybe of where you can catch bass at on bigger bodies of water. And it's something I learned guys years and years ago, like actually 10, 15 years ago, and I'm looking at Washita right now, and I'm about to bring it up and show you because it's happened to me at Washita the other day. And we're going to go talk about other lakes and just kind of picking out areas. And guys, like I said, something I don't hear about. Now, when you watch all the live coverage and fishing tournaments, you might pick up on it, though. And it can be a timely deal, but we're going to talk about how it relates to bigger and smaller bodies of water. I've done it on smaller bodies of water of finding fish. Now, we're looking at Washita right now. And I'm not going to exactly pinpoint the area yet. Uh, there's a lot of fish there. I have a video that I'm going to put out Friday of this fishing trip. And, and guys, it's a part of Washita I've never fished at before. Caught 14 and a half pounds in like an hour and a half. Um, I'm going to do some uncut kind of footage in there and go through like how I found these fish and all that stuff. So come back Friday, guys. But what this is, is fishing the backs, back halves, of like major creek so here's like a considered a major creek fishing like this area here's another one fishing like back in here okay guys let's go like up here big major creek fishing these back halves look other major creek fishing the back halves now you're like okay I've heard about anglers talking about fishing back half of creeks in the fall and you don't hear about it in the summer, but guys, on this lake, there was an FOW Cup one. I think I mean I need probably to Google it up. I got my kid here right now. I don't have both hands. He's he's want to be a part of it. Um, but this lake had an FOW Cup one where a guy won in the back half of a creek in the summer, and he was fishing residential fish. These residential fish were he, he was saying he was he was throwing a big worm around brush piles, and he was targeting fish that were eating brim specifically. Forgot his name, but then also on this lake, Scott Martin won out here. On the main lake so guys there are you know there's always fish in spots now in the winter you always hear about the the fish moving to the you know main lake front half of creeks and that's true I've been catching them here in the front half of creeks but I, I kind of me and Johnny from fish the moment talked about and about about some trips from him at Beaver then I was like dude and then we, we brought up anyway how we used to catch them in the back half of these creek and we learned how to fish this lake I did and I mimicked it in a couple creeks but let's look at one for example now guys this is cedar cedar fush there's cedar creek cedar fush um this creek I've actually have a video already of me fishing this creek but I've not been back here lately in this section but okay. just look at the map real quick yes James here I got all these baits up here for him you know so here we go so for example I just zoomed in back here okay now look, you're seeing right here, and avionics sometimes, guys, might not be perfectly on point, right? But you see a creek ditch, 20 foot, 20 foot, 20 foot, and all of a sudden it starts getting a 40, 50. Guys, that's deep enough water for these fish to live in, okay? Depending on the cover, and this lake has grass and timber and then homemade brush piles. So there's three sources of cover. Actually, rock's back here too. So you got four pieces of rock, uh, cover. Rock and grass, timber alone can hold like ecosystems crawfish, brim, bait fish of course, and bait fish will migrate out here towards the main lake. Like the video I filmed here, I found bait fish all in this front half, so I fished in that front half. But guys, there can still be bait fish back here. Bait fish can also move back there depending on water levels and the conditions we had. For example, we had a bunch of rain and snow recently, right? So there are fish guys that live in these back half of these creeks, okay, and they never leave. They never leave. And I got to fish for some of these the other day on a different part of the lake I've never been to and got to experience it. And I like forgot that like this is a thing and you don't hear about it much. Now looking, thinking about like this is a big highland reservoir. Okay. And I've done this on another highland reservoir. What's up guys? Really quick. I just want to bring up uh, something else that I offer and it's the on the water electronic lessons. I got here in central to southwest Arkansas, but one of my most requested uh, trips I do is the on the water electronic lessons. These can be uh, where I set up your, I help you set up your settings of your side imaging, your down imaging, 
live scope settings, and we also can go over whatever your needs are. I've had people ask on just straight forward-facing sonar trips, live scope trips. I've had guys go offshore fishing without live scope. So guys, if you're interested, check out my Jimmy Easterling Fishing Facebook. The link to that's going to be in the description. Send me a message and we can talk about it. In another state, here's Broken Bow. There's been times in February, January, guys, we've caught smallmouth, largemouth, and spots in the back half of some of these creeks, okay? Caught them on the main lake, too. Same day at times. Now, hope y'all can hear me. James, what you got there? Got a little, you got a little hummingbird, okay? So, now, you can have it back. Now, but like, let's talk about lowland lakes, for example. Now, if you get further south, guys, like February, those fish could be some of your first spawners, potentially, right? Uh, lake Fork, big popular lake, right? Uh, Alton Jones Jr. was not Alton Jones Jr. Uh, I don't want to mess it up. Uh, a couple years ago in the BPT, the lake was low. I mean, he's back here. Yeah, yeah, make sure, make sure I'm on the right lake. Yep, yep, yep. He's back here in Little Caney catching them. Now, he's fishing trees and stumps. Okay, trees that don't have branches, guys. Trees with the bases of the stumps along that creek channel, okay? Now, once again, this is a lowland reservoir. It's shallower, but these fish, you know, look, it's still 20 foot back here, and there's everything for these fish to have. Some of them fish, of course, are probably moving in from the front half of the creek or mid-creek, but there's fish that just probably live back there, guys, year-round, okay? Um, so that's just a lowland example. Like I said, that's Fork. It's a little further south, but guys, let's kind of go to... Um, Let's let's go back to Washtenaw, for example, and like say, hey Jimmy, what, what are we what are we what were you what are we fishing for back here? You know, like I said earlier, there's a different piece of cover. This lake. So think about your lake with the cover. This lake has rock, timber, grass, brush piles. Some parts of the lake don't have grass, so you got to figure out how the bass are using the cover. A lot of residential fish can be in that brush pile, and them fish are typically harder to catch because everybody else is fishing for them because they find them with electronics. I like to look for the fish in the unobvious areas. On my recent trip, it was on a flat near the creek, the major, the creek back there. There was a channel swing rock bank, rock bluff, okay? And these fish were on the flat. Now, there were fish up on the channel swing rock bluff, but I went to the flat near it and caught them on the flat, okay? So, for example, you could throw a bunch of things on that flat. Football jig. I was catching that day with a giant spoon. I was also, I did the finesse swim bait, too. I caught some on the finesse swim bait near the, um, the other channel swing rock bank actually then one out there on the flat and i know guys before alabama rigs when the alabama rig was new alabama rig i mean them fish hadn't seen it they'd come and just you know eat that thing this is before forward facing sonar so you got to kind of look you know some of them fish can be out here guys okay i know like this lake has a lot of timber it's hard to catch them fish around that timber at times i get it okay i know so let's go like pick another creek or lake i had a couple in mind let's go to kentucky Tennessee, Kentucky, I'm sorry. Yeah, Kentucky, Tennessee. Okay, so I had a guy the other day that watches the videos. Let me go over here. Lake Cumberland. These are some lakes, guys, I'd love to fish one day. I've had people talk to me about Del Hollow, Cumberland. I've done map breakdowns on this. I've studied these lakes. Okay, so Cumberland. Big lake. Now, think about Cumberland, how I look at it. Like, this looks like a river, right? And then there's little finger creeks off of it. There's, it's not like Washita to where it's just giant opening lake. So, uh, and then you got Del Hollow right here. So Del Hollow's close too. We're gonna kind of talk about both of these. But the thing about this lake is, look, it's so deep, right? I mean, like how deep is this thing? Yeah, 200 foot out there. That's that's crazy to me at times. I see like 130, 140. I caught fish in 100 the other day though. So like, look at this creek, big creek, right? I would not be surprised if there are fish in the back half of this creek somewhere. Now, the thing about this is there's a lot of rock in this lake, I'm saying. I mean, I know there's a lot of rock, right? I don't know the other sources of cover, top of my head. Now, look, there is a marina back here, so there's always fish around a marina. But, I mean, there could be a chance that you can find fish right here in this area. Instead of going out here to the big water, going out here, trying to find all this, trying to pick areas to where you can break them down fast. And sometimes the back half of these creeks are areas you can break down fast. You can graph some of this faster than you can a out here. There's just so much more water out here. I mean, and when you go back, like in this area, 100 foot, I mean, that's still a lot of depth for these bass. Now, I know these bass are different than bass. I'm fishing back here in Arkansas, but I mean, still, that's still pretty deep. And I know this lake has smallmouth, I'm pretty sure. I'm not a, 
smallmouth expert because I, I just don't have them where I'm at. And I don't like, yeah, I mean, there, there's some around here, but I don't like any with no smallmouth expert. Same with like Del Hollow. Let's look at Del Hollow. Another clean Highland Reservoir style lake with a bunch of fingers. Let's look at this one right here, okay? Well, there's a marina right here, so that helps. But like Mitchell Creek, let's go over here. And guys, if you're watching and you fish these lakes, let me know if I'm even on point so I can go back, okay? Or let me know y'all saw it. Now here, look, that water's a little more stained back here in Mitchell. So if it is a little more stained, there's probably a good chance that your largemouth bass, uh, is that Mitchell? Largemouth bass and your, might be in the wrong area, guys. Largemouth and, and uh, okay, yep, that, that's not it. Let's go over here. Here we go. Here's Mitchell Creek. So with a little stain, good chance that your largemouth bass are going to be potentially more shallower here. Good chance more of a largemouth population. I know them smallmouth can be back there. I've caught smallmouth in dirty water at Broken Bow up the river, okay? Um, but, like I said, right here, this is an easier area to come in here and graph look for your bait fish look for your pieces of cover and guys i know some of these lakes that like like i hear people say that they don't have bait fish in their lakes that's where you kind of got to do more potential you know fishing your obvious areas or obvious you know fishing the rock and the brush knowing guys that they're going to be eating crawfish there are still brim that the fish can be eating um because i know texas has a lot of bait fish as you get certain different parts of the country bait fish is just different i'm not going to you know get more into that but looking back at this mitchell creek i mean look ooh. We got a potential road bed back here. We got bridges if those are like legit or if Navionics is crazy. So we have some good cover for sure where bone bass can leave. But look, it's still 30 foot right here. It is still 30, so that is deep enough. So guys, let me know your comments, your thoughts on fishing the back half of these creeks. Uh, so this video from me on this trip is gonna come out this Friday. It's just something I don't hear much guys talk about and I wanted to bring it back up to you guys. Let me know if you like this style of the video. And guys, hey, we will see you on the next one.